Hi, I'm Melvin, I see you on Dr. Wealth. With me today is Chris Ng, our ERM trainer. Hey. And as you can see, what we are wearing right now is uh, the Christmas period that we are shooting this. And uh, unfortunately, something about uh, Wang Li Hong cropped up as the most important news uh, that's captured the attention of everybody, including yes. uh, Chris has been uh, keenly following the developments, right? Yes. And uh, um, it's a it's a not a very good thing, right? It's about the divorce, okay? And I also know that Chris has been working in a law firm in the past. Uh, that's right. Dealing with a lot of divorce cases, right? So that's maybe right. maybe you can share a little bit. Um, about this event and shed okay. some light for our audience, right? right? First of all, whatever I say is not going to be constituted as legal advice. Uh, it's been a very long time since I was a practice trainee in a law firm, so whatever I remember about the law is probably um, very much depreciated by now. All right. So uh, I think the important thing for men who are listening to me right now is that whatever happens to Wang Li Hong. Uh, it's not likely to apply to you, all right? Because most of you are Singaporeans. And... Uh, they're based in the US. They're based in the US. And the couple has signed a prenuptial agreement that may or may not take priority depending on what US law is all about, mm. right? Now, based on what little I remember about legal practice in Singapore, generally speaking, very generally speaking, we, we do have clients who uh, go for prenuptial agreements, uh, but our own local judges generally speaking are not very keen on enforcing it strictly okay but that doesn't mean that a prenuptial agreement is totally worthless mm. all right so um, make sure that whatever you want to do uh, uh, do not use celebrities uh, as an example of how to manage your assets in a divorce. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Yeah, Still have okay. a lot of questions, right? Yeah. So, um, you're saying that the prenuptial agreement may not apply, as you said, uh, in Singapore, they are just more reluctant to use it, right? Okay, if you is, use is a, there a reason why? Okay, if you use a very good lawyer, the lawyer who's experienced in family law here can draft a prenuptial agreement that I would say would be useful, okay. right? Would be useful. Okay. Uh, what if you make it a little bit too unreasonable and if it strays too far away from the woman's charter, very likely uh, the courts might step in and mm, say, well, okay. this is not going to So apply. it's to yeah. make sure that yeah. uh, all the parties are being e equally treated as yeah, much as possible. Yeah, equally treated. And, and our courts in particular, they're very concerned about the welfare of the children. So mm. yeah, so it's probably, I would say it's difficult to come up with something that would somehow uh, disadvantage the children in any particular way but like i said uh, my, my my the knowledge in my head all right it's very very rusty okay, okay. yeah and and probably let's talk about the financial situation that was disclosed in the news of course we do not know okay. exactly how much money or how much wealth we are talking about between the couple right right based on the news report uh, what we have heard is that they have a 12 million dollar us dollar house Right, and also a 16 million dollars worth of investment okay which they are going to split into half okay and they're going right. to take the, they're going to sell everything and take the proceeds which means that the ex-wife is going to get more than 10 million dollars okay so do you think that is a uh, financially do you think the number looks right okay from my experience right i don't think the financial numbers will matter anything more than the amount of anger uh, and her feelings of uh, the betrayal within the marriage right mm -hmm. so so uh, i expect this thing to uh, uh, become a lot more acrimonious over the next few days mm. and i i don't see any amount of money uh, being able to make this any better but to be fair it's a fairly attractive settlement right and she should be able to live in luxury with her children for the rest of her life right 45 mm. $40,000 Singapore dollars yeah, a month. Yeah, and she, she's going to get the yeah. uh, monthly uh, income from the right. ex so, so, 40000 Sing, right? Yeah, I, I don't think this is a financial discussion. The question is whether how, how far would she go to uh, destroy his uh, career? Yeah. Mm. What, what about yeah. Singapore context? How, how does the court or the law treat these kind of cases? Okay, I'm, I'm using a fairly outdated law because that was the law when I was still a trainee. That law, I understand, has changed. All right? okay. uh, in the past, what the courts would do is that they would take the husband and the wife's financial contribution and set a ratio behind it. 
Then they will take their non-financial contribution and they will set the ratio behind it and then they will average these two numbers mm -hmm. to decide how to uh, divide their assets. I, see. Okay. Uh, I think the courts have found this too quantitative and too mechanical, right? Uh, very much like my factor investing models and I understand that they have since uh, straight from this uh, particular ruling. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I really don't have an updated... Okay. To be more uh, humane. Campaign. To be more humane. Okay. So, yeah. So I think it's always this... It's the same problem with investing. That there are there are very very smart judges who believe that by coming up with a model, it simplifies the law so that people know how to act. It governs their everyday life, and yet there are judges who feel that there will be manifest uh, injustice mm. if we don't humanize the law. Mm. So so they make it a lot more subjective. And I think family law, unlike corporate law in other areas, yeah. tend to always fall into the more emotional kind of spectrum. Issues of the heart. Yeah, which explains why I never really enjoyed it. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. So so yeah. now the ex-wife is gonna have yeah. ten over million dollars. Okay. Okay. So how would you advise someone like that to manage the money? Oh. Uh, we we will probably yeah. assume that she's yeah. not used to making investment. We could be right. wrong, right? Yeah. But let's say she's someone who's not savvy with investment right. and you know getting good advice and even to know what is good advice is That's a skill. Right. Yeah. How should someone who suddenly you know? Right. Uh, went through an unfortunate event like a divorce but got a big sum of money right. and you know you just don't want to put everything in the bank what should one okay. do? so I think obviously the most politically correct and my best answer is come and become my student and then you can <laughs> learn how to invest okay yeah but but since she's not Singaporean and uh, she's not likely to spend like one and a half hours attending my preview that might not be a very practical answer but uh, between the different classes of financial advisors that she have she might be better off going for someone who is fee based, right? Because the person mm. who is fee based takes an upfront amount of money mm. and then uh, will give his best effort kind of advice on what to do with the rest of his assets, mm. right? Which uh, fee based advisory yeah. is very big in the US? Oh, I, I would not know, but I'll know where to get information on mm. it. Anthony Robbins wrote this book called Money. Yep. And uh, Anthony Robbins actually, uh, well, he, he's, he's, a, he's a little bit CD and, and into NLP many years ago. <laughs> But his finance books are actually quite decent and the advice that he has. So uh, he, he has a list of advisors who, who will behave very close to a fiduciary. E even though in America, fiduciary has a very special legal meaning, right? Mm. Yeah, so you can look for that kind of advisor. Mm. Okay. Yeah, in, in Singapore, it's very hard, right? Uh, without mentioning any name, I know of only one fee-based uh, uh, financial advisory, very prominent, but almost everybody else get some kind of remuneration through commissions mm. and for someone with that kind of money right an eight digit sum you don't want that to happen because mm. a significant amount will then go into commissions right yeah so you should pay someone a lot a of money fee. a fixed fee to advise you very well then follow that person's advice yeah but i still believe that for someone like her who might not be financially sophisticated right a, a, a very yield based dividend based kind of strategy mm. would be more advantageous than for example something that chase, chases like a technical trend Mm. Yeah, but it's really based on uh, what what they do. If they if she has enough money to pay for personality assessment, well, that that might be better. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, and it, yeah, because yeah. because getting the money is one thing, right? But right. how are you going to manage the money is an another big problem. Yeah. Altogether, big challenge altogether. It's not too different from getting an inheritance, right? Yeah. Uh, you. I I have friends who who share with me that they've won like Toto before six digit sum. There are people who get an inheritance worth millions, but the money disappears within a very short period of time mm. if you don't manage it well. Because but, we do hear a lot of stories like, yeah. you know, uh, millions are lost in a year, a few years, yeah. you know, without all the necessary financial knowledge. Yeah, and, and of course, given how high profile it is, should be surrounded by, very, be hunted by, a lot by very caring <laughs> friends who care for them so much that they will uh, find a way to maybe guide her to like direct her money elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, so yeah, we, that's that's always we, a we just we just uh, wish them best of luck, right? Best uh, of luck. Whatever is past is past. Uh, yeah. Time to look forward and yeah, yeah, new sets of problems. Yeah. So Wang Li Hong, if you're listening to this, <laughs> uh, you can join me for the next karaoke session. And I'll sing a very sad song for you. I, yeah. Maybe maybe he will sing for you instead. <laughs> but I want him to hear my singing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then in return, you give some financial advice. Right? Yes, that's okay. right. 
trade. It's a buttering yeah. trade. Yeah, it's a buttering <laughs> trade. Okay, anyway, we, yeah. that's, we hope that there's some useful tips that uh, yeah. uh, you can get from the, the discussion, right? right. Uh, besides just uh, you know, celebrity gossips. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's supposed to be a lighthearted one, right? But I know that divorce isn't the most lighthearted thing to talk about. Right. <laughs> but that's the news that's right now yeah, that people really are right. watching, okay? Yeah. Uh, anyway, Merry Christmas uh, for 2021 and uh, we'll probably see you in the next video. Hey, bye-bye. Bye-bye.